Hello and welcome to another segment of interviews that matter. I am your host Raj Mehta. Friends, in this segment we bring those guests who influence our lives. This includes elected officials, policy makers, heads of major organizations and other dignitaries. It is my sincere hope that the knowledge brought in by these guests will help our community. Friends, what is success? How do you measure success? How do you balance your life between business and your personal life? These are some of the questions that we always have it. Today's guest has a specific program which is called Creativity and Personal Mastery. His name is Dr. Sri Kumar Rao. Dr. Rao, welcome to the show, sir. My pleasure, Raj. Really Glad to be here. Honor to have you here on the show, mm -hmm. and uh, we hope to really learn a lot from you today. First, My pleasure to be here, Raj. Okay, so let's begin with uh, your life. All right. Let's begin with your life. Uh, mm. What did you do until now? What did I do till now? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I was a student for the first part. I graduated from Narendrapur, which is the flagship school of the Ramakrishna Mission. Okay. Then I went to Delhi University, where I was a physics major. Mm -hmm. Then I switched fields and did my MBA from the Indian Institute of Management in Ahmedabad. Oh, I am okay. I am Ahmedabad. Okay. Then I came to the United States. I did my PhD in marketing from mm -hmm. uh, Columbia Business School, Columbia mm -hmm. University. Mm -hmm. And then I dropped out and worked for a while in corporate America. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of switching between corporate America and business school. Right. And uh, then I decided that I didn't like corporate politics, so I went into academia. I was a professor at uh, Baruch College, City University oh. of New York. Okay. And then for 20 plus years at Long Island University, the CW Post Campus. Okay. Hmm. So you're still there? No. No, I retired from there about mm -hmm. uh, seven, eight years ago. Okay. I created a course called Creativity and Personal Mastery. Right. And that turned out to be immensely successful. Mm -hmm. I've taught it at many of the top business schools in the world. I've mm -hmm. taught it at Columbia, at mm -hmm. London Business School, mm -hmm. at Kellogg, mm -hmm. at Berkeley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's been written up all over the place. It's been in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Financial mm -hmm. Times, Fortune, mm -hmm. Forbes, Business Week, virtually every major publication in North America and the UK. Mm -hmm. So now I teach that privately mm -hmm. in New York, mm -hmm. London, mm -hmm. and San Francisco. Wow. Okay. So obviously, you know, we're going to talk about that. Sure. And uh, My pleasure. That's what I do. So I'm always ready to talk about that. Great. So tell us something about the program first. Okay. Uh, increasingly, this is a program that now attracts very senior executives and mm -hmm. successful entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And what it essentially does mm -hmm. is it propels them to an entirely different level of functioning. Okay. Now, what happens in our lives, all of our lives, but particularly senior executives and entrepreneurs, is that there is always a level of stress in their lives you know something not quite right some feeling of you know i've got to do more i've got to achieve more a feeling of unease and disquiet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and my program helps them become tremendously resilient and at the same time gives mm -hmm. them more pure joy mm -hmm. you know the sense of being glad to be who they are to have a sense of purpose in what they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they find that enormously helpful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it benefits them in terms of their psychological state. Mm -hmm. And as a byproduct, also helps them become much, much more successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give me an example. How, uh, like, you know, what do you, what, are, what is the process? Okay, the process basically is I work with individuals, and typically, as I said, I work with senior executives and successful entrepreneurs. Right. And I help them realize that the world they live in yeah. is not a real world. It's a construct. Mm -hmm. We all go around, we think, you know, we're living in a real world, and this is what is happening, and this is reality. Mm. And what I get them to see is that what they say, this is reality, is not the reality. It is a reality, and further, it is a reality that they constructed. 
and they constructed it with the mental chatter that they have and the mental models that they have. And those are two concepts that I'd like to go into it, uh, because I think it will be highly relevant to mm -hmm. your viewers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, who, how do you qualify a person or, or like somebody comes to you and ask for the program or how does yeah. it work? It comes almost entirely by word of mouth. So of mouth. Okay. one of the things I state mm -hmm. in the syllabus for my mm -hmm. program right. is this will profoundly change your life mm -hmm. and if it doesn't we have both failed. And uh, on my website, I have literally hundreds of testimonials from people who say this completely changed my life. Mm -hmm. What happens is I have a very extensive syllabus mm -hmm. and persons who read the syllabus are either attracted to it mm -hmm. or they're turned off by it. Mm -hmm. And the ones that I uh, mm -hmm. like uh, in my program are those who read the syllabus and say, I've never seen anything like that. I want to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So whenever you... Um, work with someone, an executive, senior executive or a CEO, like mm. these are the people that you work with, obviously, Correct. right? Mm. Um, what I know is CEOs are the most loneliest people in the world. Oh, yes. So therefore, they're not able to open their mind or their heart rather, even mm. to their home or outside world. Mm -hmm. How do you get them to open, your, open their mind? Because we create a very safe atmosphere and several persons who take my program say, gee, I have never spoken this openly to anybody in my entire life. And that happens because we create a culture of sharing. Even before we meet for the first time, everybody has to write a personal essay. And in that personal essay, they reveal things about themselves that normally they would never speak about. I've had persons talk about deeply personal matters such as messy divorces that they're going mm -hmm. through, child custody battle, mm -hmm. uh, struggles with uh, alcoholism, with controlled mm -hmm. substances, mm -hmm. uh, panic attacks. Mm -hmm. Oh, You wouldn't believe how open they are. Mm -hmm. And the reason that they are that open is because everybody else around them is equally open. And more important, it's a supportive atmosphere where everybody is looking, how can I help? as opposed to judging them. Okay, so it's not one-to-one -one then? Uh, it's like one-to-many? I do one-to-one -one coaching, but my capstone program, Creativity and Personal Mastery, is a small group program. Mm -hmm. Group sizes range from a low of about a dozen to a high of around 22, 23, that range. Okay, so... This so we create a very, very strong collaborative uh, atmosphere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, is it something like, you know, the groups have like a CEO group or something like that? Is it similar to that? Because it's they're also not people. Not quite similar to that because in a CEO group and so on, mm -hmm. there are some elements of what I do there. Mm -hmm. But what I do is a combination of group interaction mm -hmm. and very intense personal exploration. Mm -hmm. So we meet three times in uh, modules of two and a half days. Typically, if it's over a weekend, we begin Friday at dinner, okay. go through Saturday, and mm -hmm. end Sunday around 3 p.m. So there are three such modules separated mm -hmm. about four to five weeks. Okay. And in between, there are both group and individual exercises. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty intense experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by the time we finish, mm -hmm. you know, in many instances, you have lifelong friendships formed. Mm. And they continue to meet each other. There are gatherings which increasingly happen all over the world. Mm -hmm. I now have a worldwide alumni community. To the best mm -hmm. of my knowledge, mine is the only course mm -hmm. which started off as a business school course, but has its own alumni association. Now, how many people do you know who remain associated with a single course mm -hmm. 10 years or more after they've taken it? It mm -hmm. doesn't happen. No. Right, yeah. But in this it does because they found that it was of overwhelming value. Mm -hmm. And more important, there is continuing value in being associated with it. Mm -hmm. Typical class, you said dozen to 20 or something, right? Correct. Something like that. That's a typical class. Correct. Uh, so give me a rundown of the class, like what happens in the class. What like, happens in the class? Right. Okay. So what happens in the class is they use a variety of teaching techniques. Okay. Some of the times I speak, but I don't lecture. I just share ideas and we have a very interactive session. They're, all of my sessions are very interactive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I basically ask them to apply this to their lives. And we have a lot of small group exercises. So before we are done, every single member of the cohort mm -hmm. has been in a small group with every other member. Mm 
mm -hmm. and multiple times. Mm -hmm. And during the course of doing that, they not only learn more about each other, but they also learn about the problems that each one is confronting. Mm -hmm. And quite often they say, gee, I have that problem also. Mm -hmm. And the whole ethos of it is how can we help each other? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that is really the rocket fuel that uh, mm -hmm. generates the takeoff. Mm. So it basically, you know, when they register for this course, someone register for the course, mm. they automatically has have trust level. Created. Oh yes. So you know, I mean, obviously, you know, trust level is the most important thing, right? I mean, Absolutely. You never yes. know who you're talking to. Correct. So, are you do you help creating that trust level, or it's like, how do you how do you do that? It's inbuilt in the process. For example, mm -hmm. this is a program. This is one of the very rare programs where right. you don't decide you want to take it. Normally, when you have mm -hmm. programs, the key factors are, can I attend the program in terms of the, the dates convenient? Mm -hmm. And two, can I pay for it depending on you know uh, how much it costs and can I and if the answer to both of those is yes you're in mm -hmm. my program is not like that mm -hmm. you have to apply and be accepted and application is quite a cumbersome process by design ah. I only want people who have read the complete syllabus and who resonate with it and demonstrate in the application that they have read the syllabus and want to engage with the topics if I don't get the sense they're ready mm -hmm. I don't admit them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. before they come in, they've already demonstrated, yes, they are inclined in that direction mm -hmm. and they're ready to take the next step. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. So it's, they are pre-screened basically. Oh yes, already. definitely yeah, pre-screened, pre yes. And, and by the way, uh -huh. I even did this when I was teaching it in business schools. Uh -huh. So I have taught in many of the top business schools in the world and mine was the only course where there was this rigorous screening process uh, mm -hmm. employed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you define success? I define success in a somewhat different way than most people. I define you as being successful if you get up in the morning and you are radiantly alive. Your blood is singing at the thought of being who you are and doing what you do that as you go through the day, you mm -hmm. come radiantly alive. Mm -hmm. You know that you are doing exactly what you were put on earth to do. Mm -hmm. And more important, you have a very deep feeling of well-being. You know that you are okay. You have always been okay. You will always be look okay. Look, we're all in the human predicament, and when we are in the human predicament, stuff happens. There mm -hmm. will be serious illness and death. There will be relationship problems. There will be business reverses. Mm -hmm. There will be financial setbacks. Mm -hmm. All of these are part of being in the human condition. Mm -hmm. So as and when these events occur, mm -hmm. you will deal with them as appropriate, but you will deal with them from the space of, I am always okay and nothing can take that away. That deep feeling of centeredness, if you have that, then I define you as successful. So, like success in business, making money, that's not the only success. That's not the only success. In fact, in some cases at least, I won't say many cases, but some cases at least, I know people who've been enormously successful in terms right. of uh, you know, vast accumulation of assets, right. but their inner life is terrible. You know, they can barely sleep, they you know, have uh, panic attacks, they're mm. a psychological mess. Wow. There's no way that mm. you could define someone like that and say he's a success or she's a success. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Uh, let me come back to this, you know, program again. Okay. Right? So the program, you know, first is like you pre-screen to a different groups. Correct. And you obviously match the groups because, you know, every level, like for example, when you define a small business to a large business, mm -hmm. there's a different level of problems. Everybody has Correct. it. Mm -hmm. And it's not only a business problem. I, I, I know you also touch upon the personal problem mm -hmm. also, but you also tackle the business issues. Is that? I don't tackle the business is issues directly, but I tackle it from the personal viewpoint, which is a lot of the problems that both executives and entrepreneurs have, mm -hmm stem from how do you look at it? And what I am very good at doing is I'm engendering a different worldview in them, a different way of looking at their life mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. a different way of looking at what they do for a living, their mm -hmm. career, and the problems that they are confronting. And in many cases, what happens is when that hap when they look at it differently, the problem disappears. Let me give you an example. Yeah, exactly. I had someone who took my program earlier this year. Okay. Now, she was a very senior executive, one, one of the big four, and mm -hmm. she built up a huge consulting operation mm -hmm. with the government for that firm. Mm -hmm. And she got really tired of the politics of that, said, you know, I, I can do this on my own. So she went off on her own and then she recruited some of her former colleagues and they formed a government contracting business mm -hmm. which was immensely successful. Mm -hmm. And she took my program uh, mm -hmm. earlier this year okay. and she said, you know, Sri Kumar, I'm completely tired and bored of what I do. I get up in the morning and I don't want to go to work and you know, I want to know what I should be doing next, what's the next stage. Mm -hmm. And she took my program to find out what she should be doing next. Right. And I just got an email from her saying, I have such a different view of what I do in my life. I get up every day and I know that I'm exactly where I am. I'm building up my business and I've never had such fun in my life. Mm -hmm. She is an Inc. 500 uh, company and uh, she went to the Inc. conference. And uh, this year I wasn't at the Inc. conference. I was last year. Mm -hmm. And she said, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So that's a very typical way, I mean, not this particular way of reacting to it, but the kind of change that I'm talking about is very typical. I'm still not sure what change that, you know, like... How she viewed what she was doing, instead of being so bored say, and burnt out, she is now getting up excited at the right. thought of building. Right. She now views her business as this is the vehicle that I'm using for my growth. This incidentally is one of the reasons that right. I like working with entrepreneurs, because mm -hmm. if you can get entrepreneurs to see that they're not just building up their business. They think they're building up their business, and they are. They want greater profits. They want greater revenues. Mm -hmm. But many of them go the next stage and, you know, I want to do good for the society. I want to give back. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. in the process of doing all of that, what you're really doing is you're working on yourself. When you're running your business as efficiently as you possibly can, what you are really doing is you're working on yourself. The only thing that you ever do in life is you work on yourself. Mm -hmm. And to work on yourself, the universe gives you many tools. Gives you family, gives you, you know, the work that you do, the business that you run, mm -hmm. gives you, you know, situations that uh, uh, you confront. Mm -hmm. With the proper attitude, we can see each one of these is an opportunity for you to work on yourself. And if you have that as a framework, you'll see many things that used to bother you don't bother you at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so does it mean the positive attitude? It goes beyond a positive attitude. It's mm -hmm. not a question of I think something is good or I think something bad. It's you use it as a tool. Whatever comes to you in life is a tool and you use this tool to work on yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's much, much deeper than simply... Much deeper deep. than a positive attitude. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, like, I am a very positive person by nature, right? You know, mm -hmm. so, for example, you know, I had an article um, published in Long Island Business News just a few weeks ago. Okay. And I mentioned myself, they wanted to find out, you know, mm -hmm. and I said, you know, if outside is 24 inch snow, mm -hmm. I would think it's not 32. <laughs> That's the way right. I am, you know, okay. so, so what? I mean, 24 inch, so what? Mm -hmm. That's the way I am, right? Mm -hmm. What what is the next stage on like people like me mm -hmm. that who are already positive mm -hmm. and I you know so like you say that you know uh, I mean what what is the next for me? What is next for you? Yeah. What is next for you is for you to contemplate. Hey, what am I in? What am I here on this earth for? What are we all here for? Where are we going? You know, one day you run a business, but right. one one day you are going to die. And when you die at that instant, mm -hmm. everything that you have spent a lifetime accumulating gone. is going to be stripped from you instantaneously. It, it, it is exactly, gone. Exactly. Most of us, and especially in right. Western culture, you mm -hmm. tend not to talk about it. It is morbid to talk about death and so on. But you know, it's always there under the surface. Mm -hmm. You know, as uh, Shakespeare put it, imperious Caesar dead and turned to clay. Mm -hmm. might stop a hole to keep the wind away. Mm -hmm. So when that is what is going to happen, why are you striving? What is the value of doing all you do? You know, mm -hmm. does the ward of dust returnist? Mm -hmm. 
Mm. But there is a deeper purpose, and the deeper purpose is you're doing what you do, you're accumulating wealth, but you're not doing it for the sake of doing it, you're doing it because it is a vehicle by which you are working on yourself to recognize what is your true nature. Mm. And if you have that as the underpinning of your life, then whatever happens is fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You run a business as skillfully as you can because that's the best way you can work on yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. It gives you a completely different perspective on a whole range of issues that you confront. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll yeah. give you an example. Right. Okay. You know, I had someone who was a very senior executive at a, uh, one of the big accounting firms, and one of the things he really hated was do, giving 360 degree evaluations. You know what a 360 degree evaluation is? No. Okay, many large corporations have that. Essentially, it's a form of evaluation when you're evaluated not just by your boss, but a whole pile of people, mm. your colleagues, your subordinates, sometimes mm -hmm. even your clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a composite of all of that mm -hmm. is then communicated to you along with the areas of improvement and you know challenges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this person hated to give the results of 360 degree evaluation, mm -hmm. particularly when they were not good, which meant that the, his employee or subordinate would probably be fired. Mm -hmm. And he really hated that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So shortly after taking my program, he mm -hmm. said, you know, Professor mm -hmm. Rao, I suddenly realized that all the time I'm very highly compensated. So I just came to the conclusion, hey, I'm highly compensated and this is part of what I, you know, comes with the territory, so I'll accept it. And I realized that I was being extremely me-centered. I was always thinking in terms of why do I have to do this? I don't want to do this. I dislike doing it mm -hmm. yeah, as, and so on. Mm -hmm. And instead of doing that, I started thinking about the other person. What is he feeling? What are the things that are going on in his life? How is this going to impact him? Right. So the next time he ran into a situation where he had to develop, uh, deliver a negative uh, uh, review to, I mean, share a negative review with someone, mm -hmm. he said, I meditated for 10 minutes before I went into that meeting. And then I went into the meeting and I laid it out. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, here's what it says. This is what it shows. And unless this happens, I, so I'm sorry to say, you will probably be let go. And he said, the person broke up. You know, he was in tears and he mm. said, never in my life have I had someone speak to me like that. And then he asked, can I meet with you every week? Mm. So he said, fine. And they started meeting on a regular basis. So he started coaching the person. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, three years from that date, he had, my student had left the company, but the other person was still there and going stronger. Mm. So he said, you know, Professor Rao, there is nothing I said to him that I would not normally have said. Right. But the space from which I spoke to him was completely different. Formerly, he was speaking to him from being me-centered. You know, I don't like doing this. Why do I have to do it? And he was wrapped up in himself and what he was doing and what the impact would be on him. Now he was speaking from a much more enlightened perspective. Who is this other person? How is it going to impact his life? How will his family be? And he was genuinely concerned from that. So this, what he said was the same thing, but the emotional domain from which he spoke was different. Mm -hmm. And that made such a tremendous difference. Mm. I teach persons, or I don't teach, I teach persons techniques by which they can shift the center from which they function. And when you shift the center from which you function, your whole life is transformed. Mm. Yeah, so the way you say it is more important, really, to anything like communication. Who you are communication. being. Communication. Communication is only a small part of it, yes. Right, because the way he communicated to this other person, mm. before he was different, the Correct. way he was communicating. Now yes. he says, okay, these are the bad things, these are the good things, mm. but then bad thing, you have to, you know, work on it. Correct. So he gave him room, basically. Gave him room, but as I said, it's not what was said, mm. it's who was saying it. Mm. That's one of the most important things that I try to get mm. convey in my program. Mm -hmm. Who you are being is much more important than what you are doing. Mm -hmm. And it's the being part of it mm -hmm. that I help mm -hmm. them make a transition in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not a quick process, it's not an easy process, right. but those who stick with it mm -hmm. find mm -hmm. it makes an enormous difference in their life.
Mm -hmm. And you said that you know it's like a weekend, uh, and then for five weekends something no, like that. No, it's three weekends and three weekends. Each sub uh, each, each uh, the, the weekends are separated, uh, yeah. and it's not always on a weekend. On sometimes right, it's right. on a weekend, sometimes right. it's weekday. Right. Right. But there's about four to five weeks between the modules, right. okay. and they do a, a lot of individual exercises and group exercises in between. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty mm -hmm. intense twelve-week program. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And however, that is not the end, because mm -hmm. as I state in the syllabus, this is a journey that is for the rest of your life. Right, this is not a right. one-time exactly, thing. Exactly. So I encourage them to go back and do the exercises again in the order. Frequently, they form groups where they meet mm -hmm. informally to continue doing it. Mm -hmm. And the best results from the program come long after the program is over. And I've had numerous people say, right. you know, Professor Rao, I had my breakthrough in a year or more after mm -hmm. I did it. Absolutely. Because when you integrate, the whole idea is that I teach the exercises mm -hmm. and right. we do them for a week at a time when they're mm -hmm. in the program. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's enough time to show how powerful mm -hmm. the exercises mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. but they still remain exercises. Mm -hmm. The biggest benefit comes when the exercises stop being exercises and become a part of who you are. Mm -hmm. That's when they have real breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. The success ratio is very high, I assume. I would say that practically everybody who takes my program mm -hmm. has at least one major breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And quite a few say this completely transformed my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, j go to my website and read the testimonials. Right. They're all identified individuals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you, we are, you know, obviously, you know, you're from India, I'm from India, and we have a culture that, you know, kind of, uh, spiritual culture that we believe in spirituality Vedanta and 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 I believe that you know the some of the thing that you talk is in there you know so, so do you yes. take a part of it and kind of marry it to the present day that's oh, how very, it works very definitely I do right because what we came up with in India is immensely immensely relevant to, it's relevant to the human predicament, right. but especially, so, so, <coughs> but especially so, to persons in the high-pressure environment that we have created, in uh, both in business and in life outside mm -hmm. in America. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very relevant. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you take, like you know, you mentioned the person who did the meditation mm -hmm. before he went to this 360 interview results. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. So meditation obviously is a part of your coursework yes i don't explicitly teach meditation but i do recommend it and i have right. resources that people can use to start mm -hmm. their own meditation mm -hmm. practice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and right. mindfulness is a very big part of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's you know like balance of life is the key for mm -hmm. anybody right obviously mm -hmm. you know if i work I know that if I work, let's say, 12 hours a day, I can get better results in my business. Yeah, uh, you know, if I work 14 hours, I may probably get even better, through, right? Uh, uh, but what is the balance of life? You know, like in CEO, the mm -hmm. the life of CEO, where he has to worry about, share, you know, if he's a public company, shareholders, directors, uh, employees, mm -hmm. everywhere, from everywhere, he's attacked. Mm -hmm. The person is attacked, rather. Mm -hmm. So balance of life, that's, mm -hmm. how, how do they achieve balance of life? Like, okay. Uh, time pressure is always there in the life, particularly in the lives of people who take take my program. Entrepreneurs, senior mm -hmm. executives, they're mm -hmm. always, always uh, trying to juggle too many balls. Exactly. And one of the ways in which I help them is mm -hmm. by getting them to understand mm -hmm. that multitasking doesn't work. Mm -hmm. That. I give them an analogy. Okay. You know, imagine that this is an hourglass, mm -hmm. and one grain of sand passes through the neck mm -hmm. at a time. Mm -hmm. And no matter how much you shake the hourglass, only one grain of sand right. passes through. Mm -hmm. Think of your life like that. Mm -hmm. The task you're engaged in is that grain of sand. Focus all of your energy on that single grain of sand, on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times when people feel harried and distressed, it's because their mental chatter is running amok. They're thinking, oh my God, I have so much to do. I'm never going to finish it. I have to do this and I have to mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. And that is completely pointless. Mm -hmm. A big mm -hmm. part of the early part of the program that I run is devoted to helping them understand how out of control their inner landscape is. In fact, I'm mm -hmm. teaching a course 
Mm -hmm. This is for the executive education program of Imperial College in mm -hmm. London. Mm -hmm. And I'm teaching mm -hmm. it in March and uh, mm -hmm. June of mm -hmm. next year, 2016. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, the program is called the Inner Landscape of Leaders. Okay. So I help mm -hmm. them understand that as long as things are out of control there, mm -hmm. it's very unlikely that they will be able to function effectively outside. Mm -hmm. But when they start recognizing how out of control mm -hmm. their inner landscape is and they start taking uh, steps to address it, then a lot of things that happen outside automatically fall into place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Again, same thing like, you know, we have soul and we believe in like soul, our soul rather than yeah. ourselves. Mm -hmm. Ourselves is just a body, like kind of a, what do you call it, a housing, <laughs> right. the soul. Okay. And it just, you know, is that similar philosophy? I don't talk about soul. I don't talk about that. I just talk right. about observe right. your mind, okay. see how runaway it is, how crammed with thoughts which follow and succeed each other and uh, you know take you to places you don't want to go and the interesting thing is the more you become aware that your mind is out of control right. the more it actually starts coming under your control right? so the very important thing is that you are a witness you're not carried away by your thoughts you are the observer of your thoughts and the early part of my program is geared towards helping them recognize what a shrieking monkey we have between our ears. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Until we have some semblance of control over that, we're never going to go any place. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Right, yeah. Mind is, you know, it's very difficult to control. Yes. I mean, it goes everywhere mm -hmm. in a second, in Correct. a fraction of a second. Right? Yes. So the teaching someone or somebody is teaching themselves mm. to control that. It's not that easy. No. And you don't really control it in the sense of you have complete control over it. What you do is you can guide it so that it is less uncontrollable than before. Not that you control it, but it's less uncontrollable. Mm -hmm. Tell me something like, you know, normally the uh, person is the way they are from the beginning, right? That you know, you get molded by people surrounded by you. Correct. And number two is that, let's say, for example, if I'm a positive person and somebody is a negative person, mm -hmm. and for them to become a positive, it's it's tremendous work. Mm -hmm. How do they do that? Okay. See, what happens is to a very large extent, right? Uh, who you are is a function of the persons you are surrounded by. Right. You know, when you were young, you were shaped. You were shaped by your parents, right. your friends at that right. time, mm -hmm. teachers, mm -hmm. classmate, media. Right. There are numerous influences right. upon you. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens, and there's a considerable body of research in psychology to show that, is that who you are around, you tend to become like them. Exactly. So what happens in my group mm -hmm. is that we bring out a different part of you, a higher part of you, if you will. Mm -hmm. And when people are functioning in that, their own higher part comes out as well. And all of a sudden you become, even people who are intensely competitive and uh, looking for what can I get out of it, suddenly become very sharing, caring individuals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is one of the benefits of uh, the mm -hmm. program that I have devised because we create that atmosphere by virtue of the nature of the exercises, by virtue of the screening practices, mm -hmm. by virtue of some of the exercises which require you to go mm -hmm. out of your way to mm -hmm. help mm -hmm. others. And when people experience what happens when they are sharing, mm -hmm. then they say, that's who I want to be. Mm -hmm. And then they go out and do it in other parts of the life. That's mm -hmm. how the transformation occurs. Yeah, I think you're right because, you know, I think when somebody, else, you see somebody else doing it, mm. then you also open up. Correct. And especially when multiple people are doing it and then say, hey, I want to be part. Right. I'll give you an example. Right. One of the things that every participant is required to do right. is they're required to write a personal essay 
before we even begin the program. Okay. And all of these personal essays are duplicated and given to all members, only within okay. the group, within of the course. Group. Right. Yeah. So very often you have, oh, you know, this is very personal. I'm got, not going to reveal that. You know, I'm just going to put a little bit, but I'm not going to. Uh, right, right. And then they read what others have said. And, you know, every time I run the program, somebody comes up, oh, Professor Rao, I had no idea people were going to be so open. Can I go back and rewrite my personal mm, essay? That's it. Yep, yep. And yep. I say, sure. Yep. Yep. So that is how it goes. It feed, we, when you have a culture of giving, of being open, of caring, right. then everybody wants to be like, that's the norm that we establish for the group. Mm -hmm. And then people discover how wonderful it feels right. to yep. be like that. Yep. 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 And then more of that happens. So it's like a virtuous, virtuous cycle. You empty your heart completely, and then that's obviously relieves you psychologically, yes. and you know it also in every way, every yes. way, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I understand that you know when you mentioned that some people are like reluctant to say something about themselves, obviously you know personal, mm -hmm. and uh, CEOs are most you know oh, common thing. You know, very, they are very, like very, yes. very tight in what they say, Correct. and yes. they are very diplomatic, and mm -hmm. each each word that comes out, they have to be very careful. Correct. Now, uh, you know, when you, let's say, for example, in your group, you have 10 CEOs and nobody opens up, then what happens? You know, it's like, never example, happened. It never happened? Never happens. Okay. Occasionally, we have one or two persons who are hold out because they're very deep. But, okay. you know, before the program is halfway through, even they, they open up. say, yeah, they open up. And mm. say, you know, I've never done this before. Even my wife doesn't know some of the things that I have shared. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's very common. Of course, what uh, we, or what I did not mention yeah. is in the very first session, yeah. we established that whatever happens in the program is confidential and remains in the program. You're not supposed to talk about it outside and certainly not in any way which can identify any right. of the individual. Right. They've been very good about it. I've been teaching this now since 94 uh -huh. and uh, I've never had a problem with breach of confidentiality. Yeah, I think I was going to ask you that question, you know. Uh, confidentiality is important. Is it oh, like legalized or is no, not legalized? It's, it's Just a uh, trust kind of thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, basically, we tell them this is part of the ground rule that it yeah. is confidential and right. you share that. Mm. Like right now, for example, we mm -hmm. have a mm -hmm. <coughs> bulletin board for alumni of the program and right. somebody has made a highly confidential post mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. she feels safe enough to do that. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, people mm -hmm. are uh, mm -hmm. uh, respect that. Give us some of the names of your alumni, if you can. I mean, uh, you know, I know that you got a pretty big list and you got a pretty... Correct. So know, here's what know. I can tell you. I'm not going to give any names. Not names, but you know, like... No, I can, but I can do better than that. Yeah, okay. Go to my website and look at the oh, testimonials. Got it, got it, and got in the got testimonials, got it, got it. I don't have Joe from Alabama said this. Right, right, right. There are identifiable right, individuals okay, got it, got it. and they have said what they got out of the program. So okay, okay, that will tell it, you what I you think need. that's better way. Yes. Now, you know, we're going to talk about your book here, Happiness at Work. <laughs> right. Okay, so thank you so much for giving me this book. Hey, and my I'll, pleasure. I certainly right? will read it. Yes. I'm not a you know fast reader, but I'll read it at my pace. And it's designed so that you can dip in. The chapters are very short, so each chapter is only three or four pages. Okay. So read that. But yes. at the end of every chapter, there is an exercise. Oh. So if you really want to get value from the book, you okay. have to do the exercises. Do the exercise. So talk, talk to us about the book, mm -hmm. Happiness at Work. That book is actually an outgrowth of many of the lessons that I communicate to persons in my program are okay. split up into short chapters and given there. It's a, mm -hmm. So it's, it's a distillation, if you will, mm -hmm. of uh, mm -hmm. not all of the work, but a big chunk mm -hmm. of what goes mm -hmm. on in my program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the exercises there will make you super resilient. I mean, not just resilient, but mm -hmm. what I call mm -hmm. extreme resilience. Mm -hmm. And in extreme resilience, when you're hit with adversity, you bounce back so fast that an external observer might not even know that mm -hmm. you have been hit with adversity. Mm -hmm. So what is the frame of mind that you need in order to become like that? How do you cultivate it? How do you get to the point where you really experience pure joy in your life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So lots of lessons which are drawn from our wisdom traditions. It's all your experience basically. Uh, it's not my experience. No, I mean, but it, yeah. teaching. Yes. Oh, yes. Right. I mean, you accumulated. Definitely. Yes. 
It's so accumulated it's wisdom of right. a lifetime, but exactly. it's not my wisdom. I draw from many, many different many people, sources, right, yeah. including our sages. Right, right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, happiness at work, right? So let's say, for example, many people are not happy mm -hmm. when they have to go to work. Correct. Because they don't, they don't like what they're doing, which you already mentioned. That oh, absolutely. I was there for, for a very long time. Right, mm -hmm. right, yeah. So they still keep on doing it because they need paycheck. Mm -hmm. So what do they do? Change the job? <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing. But, uh, you know, if they change the job, what's going to happen is, uh, you know, another six weeks, six months, they'll be the same sorry, miserable self right, there right, right, right. as they are here. Right. See, this happens when you view the job as... Right. This is what I'm expecting from a job and you're looking at it right. from a me-centered perspective. Mm -hmm. You're always going to find something mm -hmm. short. Mm -hmm. But if you look up the job as this is a job which is given to me and I'm using this as a tool to work on myself, mm -hmm. your perspective is different. Mm -hmm. And when the perspective is different, you find that you no longer resent it, you no longer uh, uh, hate it, mm -hmm. you, it doesn't get your spirits down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what is the internal mind shift you have to engineer and how do you do that? Mm -hmm. That's what my program is all about. Mm -hmm. You also have been uh, on CNN and... Oh, I've other, been on uh, every many, major thing. I've been many, on ABC, CBS, CNN, right? PBS, Fox News. Wow. You uh, name it, yes. Interviewed. Correct. Yeah, right, okay. Mm -hmm. So, it's, it's, uh, it's an honor to have you here, sir. My pleasure. Yeah. Uh, obviously, no. Um, you know, but I've never yes, been in on a TV program which is primarily for the Indian community. This is the first such program. So tell us something about now Indian community. Tell us, talk to us something about because you know our community better. You know, we got scientists, we got doctors, we got professionals, we got entrepreneurs. Got every kind of people here, also, Correct. and major, you know, a lot of successful people. Oh, we've got a lot of extremely successful, extremely people. successful people. Yes, right. Yeah, but I really don't think I'm qualified to speak about the Indian community as such because mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. don't make it a point to uh, particularly relate to people as part of the community. Obviously, many persons of Indian origin, like myself, mm -hmm. have been through my program, but I relate to them as individuals who have taken it mm -hmm. as opposed to mm -hmm. members of the community. Right. So I'm not quite mm -hmm. sure I can answer that as a general one. Plus, mm -hmm. you know, we mm -hmm. are such a diverse people that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're all over the spectrum right. In, right. in every way that you can think of. Mm -hmm. So, but somebody from an Indian community, you know, who already has some basic background of, you know, spirituality and things, that may help them faster achieving results? Is it that may help them, it may not help them. Uh, let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I did a number of programs for a right. very big company, Prudential. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is Prudential PLC, so it's the British company we're talking about, not America. I did okay. uh, mm -hmm. a program for the high achieving uh, uh, managers. Mm -hmm. And one of the mm -hmm. persons who was uh, actually British mm -hmm. uh, told me, you know, Professor Rao, after your talk, Mm -hmm. I heard some people saying, oh, you know, that, that's simple, easy stuff, and we've learned it, we know about it all our lives. Mm -hmm. And these were all persons of Indian origin. Right. And they said, oh, you know, it's just taken from the Gita and various sources, there's nothing new there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I asked them, mm -hmm. okay, what have you done about it in your life? Mm -hmm. And none of them could answer the question. Mm. So sometimes persons who are from Indian origin have a tendency to disparage it of, you know, this is just old stuff, we've heard it all their lives. Right. And they don't really engage with it in their lives and therefore, you know, has no impact. Mm -hmm. So I find that there are people at both ends. Some of them mm -hmm. understand it and the first time they say, now I see how it's relevant to my life and they make great progress. Mm -hmm. And there are others who say, hey, you know, this is mm -hmm. just old stuff and they don't get anything out of it. Mm -hmm. I have very few of the second kind because of the screening process that I employ. Exactly. So right. people who yeah, feel yeah, that yeah, way, yeah, 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 they yeah. don't come to my program right, and if right. they do, I can make out from the application and they're not admitted. Right, right. Yeah, I think your screening program probably can identify Yes. You know, who is right and who is not right. right? I would Obviously. say, you know, I have a very, very high success, success rate. It's a very good screening process. Mm -hmm. Tell us something. Uh, where would be Dr. Uh, Shri Kumar Rao five years from now? What is your goal? 
I don't really have a goal anymore, Raj. I do what I do because it's the right thing for me okay. and whatever happens, happens. Okay. I'm finding increasingly that companies are mm -hmm. drawn to what I say. Okay. I'm finding that organizations like mm -hmm. EO, which is the Entrepreneurs' Organization, mm -hmm. and YPO, which is the Young Presidents' mm -hmm. Organization, mm -hmm. even WPO, which is the World Presidents' Organization, mm -hmm. they're all being increasingly attracted to what I do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. it's spreading organically and wherever it goes is fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I don't have an explicit goal which is quite the reverse of what people tell you in business, you should have a goal and mm -hmm. work towards it, I don't. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, whatever unfolds is okay. Mm -hmm. So, you keep going? I keep going and, and I don't know how much longer I'll be doing what I do but, you know, I enjoy it mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as mm -hmm. uh, uh, somebody else put it, you know, I'd retire mm -hmm. and do what? I enjoy it every day. Mm -hmm. So, I would do nothing different. It's kind of a public service. It is. Yeah, because you know, you're guess, huh? changing lives of people. Yes. You know. But this is where I try not to let my ego get in the way. Mm -hmm. I am not changing people's lives. They are changing I am privileged yeah. that I am able to communicate great right. teachings in a way that makes sense with sense to them right. and they change their lives. So the only the person tool. who can change your life, Raj, is you. Right, right. All I do is I give you the tools, right, which right. will and instruct you in the use. Right, right, right. right. And that the right. fact right. that I can mm -hmm. do so is mm -hmm. an honor and a privilege. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The last uh, question that just came into my mind that you say you you mentioned that you know six week course, uh, obviously you know that's a beginning and then you keep on doing it for like. You know, the rest of your rest life. Rest of your life. Correct. Uh, then you have to keep remembering that. Is that uh, uh, that's how it should be basically? Correct. Right? Yes. To keep remembering, like for example, you try to do something different, and then immediately thought should come that no, I should be doing things this way. Correct. Right. That is absolutely true. Many people have taken my program more than once, and mm -hmm. many oh. say, "Hey, you know, I got more out of it the second time than mm -hmm. I did the first mm -hmm. time." It's very common. Mm -hmm. Any final message uh, to the viewers? Yes. What I would like each person to know is mm -hmm. that your life did not happen by accident. You created it. And if you don't like it, you can deconstruct the parts of it you don't like and reconstruct it again. Mm -hmm. And you keep doing this over and over again. Mm -hmm. Because life is altogether too short. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a deep sense of well-being and happiness every day, the knowledge that you are okay. Yes, stuff happens, things will go wrong, business reverses, financial set, all of that is part of life. Right. But you deal with it as appropriate from a real, real deep sense of joy. You know, in India we call it Ananda, that is always with you and can always be with you and from that you function. Mm -hmm. If your life is not like that, you're wasting your life. Mm -hmm. Don't. It's too short. Life is too short. Yes. Agree. Agree. Thank you, sir. My pleasure, Raj. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions, comments, you can email me at rajmitv at gmail.com. That's again rajmitv at gmail.com. You can watch our prior shows on YouTube at youtube.com slash Infosys International. That's again youtube.com slash Infosys International. Until next time, have a great week. Thank you very much.